Hey, I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. Thank you. Podcast below in the description. Check that out as well. We're brought to you by, sponsored by Tito's Handmade Vodka. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Number one vodka in America, sponsor of this podcast and this YouTube channel. Go make yourself a cocktail. Yeah, make yourself a Tito's kickoff. How about that for the weekend? A little OJ, a little soda water, and some Tito's Handmade Vodka. Crafted to be savored responsibly. Your football life, you've had some pretty crazy moments over the course of your career, like high highs, low lows. The biggest stories in the NFL, you've been around them, it feels like, every year. There was the, I was watching Field of Dreams the other day, and uh, James Earl Jones does this speech, which they made into a commercial now, which is like the one constant over history has been baseball, right? Like, <laughs> like they could do the speech about Joe, but instead of like the railroads and wars, it'd be like Singletary dropped his pants to Alex Smith, to Harbaugh, to Chip, to Colin, like on and on and on and on. What's like, what was the craziest part? Like, if you look back, what's the crazy, you've answered questions about, some of the craziest things in the last 15 years in the NFL, what's the craziest? That, I mean, just all those things. It's, um, and I'm never, I'm never, I always get surprised because I, I have been a part of so many memories and that's all kind of just jumbles together, especially if you play somewhere for so long and you kind of focus in on like what your last memories were. So a lot of my memories from football come from like the Shanahan era and, all that stuff because it was fresh in my mind. But I mean, just you bringing up Singletary, dropping his pants in the locker room and threw a chair actually against the wall and it stuck in the drywall. One of the legs stuck in the drywall. And it was a really serious, tense moment in the locker room, but we were all like wanted to bust out because just the picture of, it was like some from a Hollywood movie that I was like, are we part of this right now? Like a halftime speech where he's throwing a chair, sticks in the wall, you might as well let these guys come in here and tell you to pull your pants down. Like <laughs> there's a lot of stories that we just you know, laugh about now. Um, the whole you know, Singletary speech after his first game where he sent Vernon Davis into the locker room. Um, I still get a, we want winners. That was always a great one. That was a good one. That's a good um, one. You know, just funny press conferences that we've had throughout the years with like Jimmy T he farted. Yeah, you think he farted in the press conference? For sure, he farted. No question. <laughs> I think Jimmy farted every every like five minutes of his life. <laughs> just a man. Just what, a, what, he's a man's man. He's a guy from Pittsburgh area, you know, Pittsburgh, PA. John, we were on radio. You and I were doing radio back in the day, the day of the infamous "Did he or didn't he fart on the air?" Tom Sula press conference. I think we were carrying it live. It might have been that timing right of matched up. We were like literally on the air as that press conference was happening. Maybe we came off right after. I feel like we were the first people to wonder out loud, was that a fart or was that just a chair? Somebody made a noise by a microphone. It was a fart. And I think it's got a hot mic in there. And Tom Sula was caught. He was caught poopy pants. You know, I was going to say red handed, but I think he was caught pooping pants. Yeah. And, and Tom Sula looks like a guy who's, you know, probably pooped his pants a time or two over his, over his life. The, uh, yeah, the George Brett. You know, uh, it's funny. I mean, we talked about it on the podcast, you and I, what Staley just talked about. Like, he really encapsulated this several crazy eras of Niner football to the point that no individual, Nolan, Singletary, Tom Sula, Harbaugh, Chip, Shanahan, to like n none of those were even full eras in their own right. Like Harbaugh was, it was four years, but it was like three. It, it was as an era. It wasn't that like four feels like a little short to be an era. Joe, I agree. the whole thing. I mean, if you had bingo of like every crazy thing that you could be a part of, high highs, low lows, you really he checked so many boxes. Played in two Super Bowls? Well, how many guys play for the same franchise their entire career? Have Nolan Singletary, Harbaugh, Chip, Tom Sula, Kyle, six head coaches, three general managers. Remember, Scott McLuhan drafted him. Then they phased in Balky, who was like working for McLuhan, who takes over. And it just seamless transition. Joe was good. But then John Lynch, sometimes like when that new administration comes in and older player was still some value, it wouldn't have been that crazy to maybe try to recoup, get a pick. But Kyle loved him. John loved him. They all loved each other. Five years later, they're having Fourth of July together. I'll never forget one day we were hosting a baseball show with Kevin Euclid. 
married to Tom Brady's sister. And he was talking about what made that like 04 Red Sox teams. And he played for a bunch of them, but that team that was really special. And he said, we just had great teammates. And everyone said, yes. Like their first reaction was always yes. Like, hey, we need to play right field today. Hey, we need you to bat six today. He was like, everyone was just on the same page. And it was just, and I think once you start winning, guys no longer say yes, they say no. And I think about this sometimes too, because my reaction can be when I get something I don't totally do, it's no. I feel like Joe Staley for being a well-established multiple time pro bowl at every single turn was just a guy that just said yes. And I think a lot of times in pro sports, by the time he started going through the coaching turnover right after Harbaugh, he was so established. He did not need to be that good of a teammate and it wouldn't even have been on him. He could have been like, this is nuts. <laughs> this is crazy. And I, I think that there are a lot of those guys in the league who are just pretty good guys even think about jj watt last year there was kind of that something happened weird with bill o'brien remember and then he, all of a sudden brought bill o'brien got fired and people were like yeah i think you know it was like he went to the owner like jj watt and him had a blow up at practice how did staley in his entire career never have one of those issues that became public that's pretty nuts it's pretty I, it speaks guy. to him it does it, it's I was just thinking, I, I don't know if I said this to him in the question. And but. I'm not trying to crush J.J. Watt. Like, he probably wasn't even wrong. Bill might have just lost his mind, right? Yeah. And you, you mentioned it to Joe. It was not part of this, but the fact that he helped them do the Trent Williams deal by not announcing his retirement until they got the Trent Williams thing done. So he was in on that. They tr- For them to trust him to that level, um, it's pretty unique. The amount of – insane stuff he's been asked about over the course of his career because he's easy to work with the media happily walk up to Joe and ask him a question. I listed like six things we could go on and on. Chris Culliver, Bruce Miller, uh, bulky. Uh, I mean, it's just the amount of stuff that Joe Staley had to stand up and answer a question about it borderline unparalleled. Would you say crazy weird shit? I know you and I lived it and we were in the area and obviously doing this for a living, talked about it. I do think, though, the harbaugh bulky story and just the Harbaugh situation and Kaepernick, even not the, him and Alex, but once he started kneeling in that story, are two of the bigger sports stories of the last decade. The, Jim, remember, Jim Harbaugh might get traded, then he was going to get fired. That happened. like that, And that was, he was a... Been to, he just went to the Super Bowl, <laughs> right? Had been to three straight championship games. Maybe that was after his third championship game and they lost to Seattle. That was an enormous national story. And the Kaepernick thing is one of the more unique, non-like playing stories probably we've ever seen, at least for us. I mean, there have been in the different history of time, but like yeah. that we've lived yep. through, that's, you know, it's one of the biggest in the NFL, probably, yeah. of our lifetime. Absolutely. I think it's one of the biggest in NFL history. And, and he was like, who would you go to? I'd always. go right to, if I it was like, you gotta ask Go to Joe. Joe. Go to Joe. I mean, he'd be borderline like a Niners historian because he is. Wouldn't you say it's not, when times are bad, it's not an envious position to be in, right? To be the team spokesman, basically. No. Yeah. It's easy and when you never, play for like the Patriots. In that position, snap. I'd be like, guys, this I is would've. not, I, I'm. I'm the left tackle. I take care of my business. Why are you bothering me with 900 of these stories about who hates who and whatever? And he was always uh, often like he's tight with Alex. I know. You know, like you asked him a great, we'll talk about it in another M- McGlinchey. He had a really great answer on McGlinchey and he's tight with the guy. Like he's often being asked about because he's a great teammate, people that he has a, re- a good relationship with. Really tough spot to be in, and he navigated all of that very, very professionally and very well. Yeah, just.